Hello everyone, my name is Chuck and you're watching episode 180 of Let's Plant. How is everyone? I hope you had a lovely Easter weekend because I'm sure I did. I spent the Easter holiday with my family in the city. We went swimming and hitting the arcades and we won a lot of tickets and the kids redeemed slime. What is it with kids and slime? In the last episode, we finished working on the cascading bows design and let's see what you had to say. It is time once again to read your comments. Now before we begin, I apologize for my being so whispery. It's because everyone is asleep right now and I am recording in my home office. In the last episode, we have finished our cascading bowl design. All had very nice things to say. Here are some of those comments and again, I am so glad that you really liked what we did in the last episode. I also dropped a question asking for your suggestions on what we would do on the next landscape. Jess Succulents said to create a mountain range type of mounding, a la Sierra Madre uh, mountain range. It's a, it is a mountain range in the Philippines. Two tier planting levels, then a continuation of the coral reef theme, but with, a, with the Gibiflora hybrids mixed with a couple of succulents with height. This is a good idea. I kind of like having uh, a continuation of the nature theme. We had cascading bowls mimicking the rice paddies, rice terraces. Now we have a mountain range and Christine McPherson agrees with the mountain range idea. So yeah, it looks like we're definitely going to do that now. Marilyn Rich says to take the leftover plants and fill up the bowls. They will grow beautifully. You don't need to plant so sparsely. I do like the look of having a very dense design. Right now, I am trying to get the, the main plants settled in. Maybe in spring, I'll start adding more cuttings. But until then, I'm just going to leave them sparse. because I really need those plants to uh, set out their roots. So I want them to be settled before winter. Miss Broccoli asks if I'm going to add any top dressing a la Laura Eubanks around the plants. I'm going to push that until the very end. Adding top dressing, for me at least in my workflow, means that I am already sealing the design. There's still a lot of things that I might change here. I do not want to paint myself in a corner by finalizing something that I'm not yet sure about. From XOX, can you update your hybrid? I've been waiting all this time. I'm sure they're very pretty. Thank you. If you remember, I have neglected my garden for over a year. I'm pretty sure that not all of my seedlings have uh, made it. But again, I haven't checked, so I am equally as curious as you. Yeah, maybe we should work on that in the next episode. I also mentioned something about uh, selling off my excess plants. I'm getting ready to create another uh, $100 pack with assorted cuttings. Might create a $100 Echeveria Elegance pack. It might be a good idea for those who are looking to fill up an area of the garden with Echeveria Elegance. I am going to post some updates on the community page here on YouTube as well as on my Facebook page. So keep a lookout on any of those platforms. But I apologize in advance if you are overseas. I am having enough trouble dealing with um, local postage, post local postal service and years there are still massive delays again due to the covid pandemic the last thing that i sent interstate was just last week it took twice the amount of time and my main concern is that if i didn't let the plants dry enough then they might be growing well inside the package especially if they are being left in a, in a warehouse or a depot somewhere where it is warm i would prefer it if the plants had very little transit time i can only do australia and I don't want to deal with all of the permits and the certificates because I just do this during my free time. And I guess that's all of the big questions. Let's get back to the video. Before we start working on the next landscape, there are a bunch of things that I wanted to do. Number one, chop off flower stalks. Number two, reset leggy echeveria. Number three, separate the offsets. Number four, separate the clumps and number five get their roots established 
before winter arrives. I am in Melbourne, Australia, which is in the Southern Hemisphere. Hopefully, those of you in the Northern Hemisphere are starting to get your nice and warm weather by now. As for us down here, we are two-thirds of the way into autumn and soon it will be winter. Our temperatures are starting to go down and we tend to have equally wet winters and summers. With the lowering of temperatures and the higher chances of rain, this might be a problem for my Echeveria because soon they will be going dormant and they tend to grow faster in warmer temperatures. If I go around chopping my Echeveria now and they go dormant, they might not have a chance to push out roots and establish themselves before winter. My goal is to take advantage of all of the remaining sunny days that we have leading up to winter and have that bit of time for my Echeveria to grow. But I wish the timing could have been better. For the past few weeks, we have had some scattered rains and I haven't been able to do anything in the garden. Hence the delay between the last episode and this episode, and of course the holidays. But in any case, we need to do something about it. Thankfully, I still have my grow tent and grow lights sitting in the garage, but I haven't turned it on for over a year now and I hope it still works. Let's go have a look. Yeah, looks like they still work. So here's the plan. I will chop all of my leggy echeveria now and I will place them here inside this grow tent where they could stay dry and warm under the grow lights. Now speaking of grow lights, a word from our sponsor. Growing a home garden has never been simpler. Hydro Art Pod creates the perfect controlled environment for sustainable plant growth indoors. The highly automated growing system requires minimal attention from users, only needing water refills every few weeks and adding nutrition containing pods when notified by the app. Thanks to the innovative hydroponic system, Hydro Art Pod grows seeds three times faster than traditional soil methods, bringing plants to life in as little as 48 hours from planting. The the device can support up to 30 different plants at once. A wall of greenery framed in the sleek Hydro Art Pod device will be a curious home decor piece, bringing a feel of freshness to any space. Powered by smart sensors that track water and nutrition levels and plant growth cycles, Hydro Art Pod gives users comprehensive information on their plants, taking the guesswork out of plant maintenance. The connected app alerts users of the plant's feeding times and the optimal harvesting periods, integrating the indoor garden into users' smart home ecosystems. Hydro Art Pod brings the benefits of organic produce to every household. Hydro Art Pod is on Indiegogo, link in description. So I'm just getting out the knife and some isopropyl and then we'll be ready. And don't forget the Seca Tours for the flowers. Let's start with this Echeveria display area. As you can see, a lot of them have pushed out flower stalks and we are going to remove them now. been watching my show for quite a while now you would know that my preferred way of propagating the larger freely echeveria is by using the flower stalks now i have made several videos about it in the past but a quick recap there are basically a few ways to use flower stalks for propagation and they involve either the leaves or the flowers now for the flowers obviously it refers to growing from seed and I'm not going to do that today but as for the other methods involving the stems and the flowers no the stems and the leaves there are a few ways to go about it in all of those cases where you are planning to use the stem you have to remove all of the existing flowers especially if they haven't bloomed yet that way all of the growth would be focused on the rest of the leaves or rather the nodes on the leaves from the perspective of the flower stalk the flowers at the tip this is the apical meristem this is where the main most of the growth is happening by removing this we are activating all of the lateral meristems around the stem this is basically a way of saying that uh, instead of growing upwards it's now going to grow laterally we're going to do that on this one as well now from here there are two things that you could do. You could either leave the stem still connected to the main plant or you could cut off the stem and replant it somewhere else separately from the main plant. There are advantages and disadvantages of either method. The advantage of keeping them on the plant means that you don't have to wait for them to establish. It is already taking nutrients from the main plant. The main plant already has a well-established root system which 
the stems could piggyback off off any growth that would happen on the stems could happen sooner and the second method is to separate the stems from the main plant and basically all you have to do is to cut them off like so and now you have stems without flowers just the leaves remaining you might have heard some people suggesting to chop off each the stem into individual maybe nodes maybe two leaves per segment i don't like doing that because by then what that means is you are limiting yourself you're limiting the number of nodes per segment and for Gibby flora varieties they do not tend to do well with just leaf propagation so if you just have a segment with two nodes or you know two leaves maybe one of those nodes would be growing roots and leaving you with only one other um, node to grow an offset there's a larger chance that both of them would grow roots rather than just one if you keep a stem like this intact with uh, much more nodes the lower nodes would grow roots while the upper nodes would have a higher chance of pushing out a new pop this is my preferred method and i'm going to do this on all of the plants another advantage of removing the flowers from the stem is that you are separating the stem from another potential vector for plant disease and that would be insects such as mealybugs, aphids or whatnot and those insects are mainly attracted to the flowers so without the flowers you know there's nothing to pull them in so let's go do that remove all of the flowers that we see and keep the stem stumps as is i'm not going around labeling my plants or rather my stems because there's a lot of them it is tedious and i'd like to just surprise myself and see a random assortment of um, new echeveria by spring and i don't know sometimes it's fun trying to guess what plants they are because when gibiflora hybrids are small they tend to look a lot alike but as they grow older that's when they start to differentiate so you know as uh, Forrest Gump would say, life is a box of chocolates. In my case, my gardening life <laughs> is a grow tent full of random Giviflora hybrids. If you're asking where specifically to chop, I basically just go for maybe one or two nodes below the lowest um, flower bud that I see. In this case, I see that the flower is here. So I maybe count one to two leaves below and cut under it like so and we are left with this stem now that we have all of these stems we are going to give them a few days to dry out for the cut parts to dry out and that's when we are going to deal with it what i plan to do is to place them in pots and probably just grow them inside the grow tent i don't know we'll see but in any case, I want these things to be protected. Not like that. <laughs> Apart from the flower stalks, I also wanted to save some of my leggy echeveria and reset them. These are all of the heads that I managed to gather. There are still more that I could reset, but this will do for now. I might run out of space in the grow tent, but I could do the others at a later date. For now, I would need to move these to a dry, protected place that is uh, still well, well lit up, maybe somewhere under the alfresco, just so they stay out of the rain. But I would not be moving them into the grow tent until they start growing roots. But, or maybe I should because it might get cold over the next few weeks. I don't know. But for now, I'll take advantage of the, the warm days again, the warm clear days that we're having and let them grow out in the open. That way I do not consume unnecessary electricity. So yeah, let's go do that. As I mentioned, some are protected. So maybe on this shelf for now, if only I could get in there. All right, great success. As you can see, they're still under the roof, protected against any rain. I'll be leaving there for several more days, maybe 
up until the next weekend and that's when I would start um, planting them in pots and maybe leave them somewhere in a propagation shelf that has no cover overhead that would give them enough direct sunlight because as you remember I plucked them out of the ground and they were used to having a lot of sunlight so yeah and that takes care of some of the items from our list we managed to remove some flower stalks we managed to reset some of the leggy echeveria and maybe even some of the offsets. There are many other plants that I would like to break up, particularly the smaller clumps. And that's too much work to show on camera. So maybe I'll do it off camera and show you the results in the next episode. And before we end this episode, I would like to leave with a question. And that is, how do you prepare for winter? Or for those in the tropics, how do you prepare for the rainy days? Place your comments down below. I would love to hear from you and we could all learn from each other. So until the next episode, if you enjoyed what you've seen today, please subscribe so you'd see more and see what happens next. Leave a like and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.